everybody. Welcome to the FAM podcast. My name is Nick and I get to be your host today. Today we are going to sit down with Heidi Fleming. She is the kids pastor at Quinnidia Church. Um, she is an awesome person, a great parent. At the time that we recorded this episode, uh, Heidi was waiting for the birth of her third daughter. And so now her daughter is born and her and her husband Bryce have three girls awesome family. And today, Heidi gives us some great insight on what is the spiritual atmosphere at home? What does that mean? Can we influence it? Uh, What what are our responsibilities as parents and how can we affect the atmosphere spiritually in our homes? So I'm thankful that we got to sit down and record this episode. Uh, And so thanks for watching it on YouTube. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn lots. And really our our goal and and my prayer is that it helps you disciple your kids and lead your families well. So enjoy this episode with Heidi Fleming. Well, Heidi, welcome to our podcast. I came up with a name, by the way. Oh, really? I think so. I I think I'm going to call it the FAM podcast. Oh, I like it. I like it. I think that's cool. I think it it gives us some flexibility to talk about life in general. Yeah. Hard to Church avoid fam. family. <laughs> exactly. Church no, I'm fam. excited. I think this is going to be great. I, I've always wanted to do a podcast, so I think this will be fun. Awesome. Well, I thought it would be fitting for you to, to join us because um, obviously you're a mom. Um, mm-hmm. You're deep in mom zone, building <laughs> a human every day, as well as raising two more. Exactly. Yep. Um, but also you have been a children's pastor for how many years? I don't know. Seven, eight, seven Something sounds like spiritual that. enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good number. Yeah, Let's so, go with that. So you've been children's pastor at, at Koinonia for, um, seven spiritual years and, uh, <laughs> and you've been a mom as well for a few of those. So I thought it'd be really fun to, um, sit down and have a conversation today around um, parenting and around more specifically um, the spiritual atmosphere of our homes and what it's like for us as parents. I mean, I don't have a child out of the womb yet, so I'm just here to learn um, mm-hmm. and ask some questions. But now more than ever, we are so Um, have such a direct impact on the atmosphere that our kids experience. Um, And I don't know if everybody always thinks of that. I only thought of it because you sent me a message about it. So I wonder if you could maybe share a little bit of kind of what you've been pondering and thinking about when it comes to the spiritual atmosphere at home. Like, what does that, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm, Totally. It's definitely a good timing to talk about it because obviously for a lot of us, most of us have been sort of forced into this situation where we as parents are the number one, 100% influence on our kids. And so often, you know, there's another influence somehow, school, childcare, you know, that was my case. I work outside the home. So I'm thankful for the childcare that my kids are part of. But now being at home, I realize like, we're it, you know, my husband and I are we are in charge of this house and what happens here. We're the gatekeepers of this home. What's yeah. in, what's out. Um, the atmosphere of our home. What does it feel like? You know, it, we are the influencers first and foremost of it. And so I'm definitely extra aware of realizing like, ah, what are we doing? We can't just let it be. I mean, and that's the way it works, right? You have an atmosphere in your home, a spiritual atmosphere, and it's either by design or just by default. And I think that's something that I've been challenged in is really thinking about being intentional about the design and not just letting it kind of happen every day. So, yeah. So when that first hit you that it was like, oh man, I am the sole atmosphere setter. Like I like that term you use the gatekeeper. Was that intimidating to recognize? It totally is. I th- uh, on one hand it is because you, you feel the weight of the responsibility. Like these kids now have, really no other outside influence other than a zoom call with you know grandma and grandpa or whatever but really we're it and it challenges you to think about your own relationship with god and is it real and think about how do i walk in peace am i at peace and how do because kids are so perceptive Hmm. i think that's something that has really always struck me about kids is that 
they can tell they're not dumb. <laughs> like they can tell when things are off or they can just sense it in people. Like we can, you know, if you, if you meet someone, you feel like that person just has a piece about them. I can't describe it. I just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it comes from within, it comes from their relationship with God or just this contentment and knowing that God's taking care of things. They can trust him. There's something so beautiful about that. And kids can tell like, and our, the atmosphere of our home is not always like that. Like there's, yeah, definitely moments and days where it's like, this is nuts. What is happening here? And I don't, you know, you just have to realize like, okay, well, God, I need your help because I don't want to just let this um, continue. What do I do? I can't just, you know, we, we can't just be selfish and be like, peace out, everyone. We can't handle this today. <laughs> you know, hey, kids, you're on your own. It's too much for me. I'm overwhelmed, you know. But we have to go, okay, how do I handle when I'm feeling overwhelmed? And where do I, how do I not let go of my peace? And where do I get it back? Um, because my kids need me to see me, need to see me do that. And it, yeah, I, totally. I think it's interesting how um, one of the things that I've noticed as I've had conversations with parents, um, even just as I'm preparing to become a dad, thinking about how um, so often the big things that shift in parenting aren't actually the kids. Like it's often me as the parent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's so fascinating how whatever's going on inside of us is going to shift the atmosphere, which then is what our kids are in all day. Yeah. Um, I should have, I should have asked at the beginning, what is your household like? How many kids do you have and how old are they? Oh yeah. For <laughs> to sure. give well, us some I'm, context. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm only four years into this parenting journey, so I am by no means an expert. We have a four-year-old daughter and an almost two-year-old and one on the way I'm due next week. So um, that's, <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> ask me again in a couple weeks how it's going. <laughs> it might be different, but um, yeah, so that's us. So my husband Bryce and I, we have two two girls and one more on the way. It's a surprise. We don't know what the gender is yet. So, so cool. So you, so when you talk about your kids being perceptive, you're not talking about teenagers, like no. who are at school every day learning stuff. You're talking about, you said two and four. Yep. So how do you, like, in what ways do you notice the perceptiveness of your kids? Like, what does that actually look like? I mean, I don't have any, so I don't know what that kid, I, I, get, I know perceptiveness in teenagers and in adults, but yep. how are kids perceptive? Well, I think that they they can pick up on subtleties in our emotions and our cha changing emotions and they can sense the tone of your voice. Like all the ways that you communicate, they, they, they know that oh, something changed here. What was that? And they're not going to be able to say, mom, you seem upset. <laughs> um, or mom, why, you know, but they may say, you know, there's times when I'm like, I'm emotional. I just, it's yeah it's either hormones or quarantine or whatever crazy <laughs> yeah and uh, mom why are you crying you know what sometimes mommy's sad or whatever they they can just they can tell and they can hear it in your voice and so i think um yeah they can just feel things do you think that know. do you think that as we grow we can become less perceptive like do you think mm -hmm. there's things that your kids pick up on that maybe adults wouldn't I don't know. I, th I think maybe. I really do because I, I feel like or we learn um, how to socially uh, adapt mm -hmm. and to cover things or hide things. And kids are so honest and open uh, with their emotions. Like <laughs> big emotions, you know, run rampant here. We have two girls. <laughs> so <laughs> they, it's, it's emotional. But um, yeah, I think maybe they don't have the filter. They don't have a filter. And that's kind of refreshing in a way. You're kind of like, okay, clearly you're upset. No, let's talk about it. Um, so I, I do think they pick up on things. The other thing I was thinking about is with spirit, the atmosphere of your home, it's kind of like the way I sort of see it is like a thermostat. You know, okay. you, you, you set the thermostat in your house, right, to be a good temperature that you feel comfortable in. And I think sometimes we have to realize that sometimes it's like, like the other day, it was so hot, right? And I'm like, Super hot. okay, can we turn it down? Like, this is so hot right now. And those few degrees make a big difference in how it feels. Mm. And I think um, something that I've thought about when I was saying as gatekeepers, 
sometimes it's not a big, big shift that we need to make. Sometimes it's just turning up a couple degrees. Like, let's just increase our awareness of the presence of God here um, and turn to him <laughs> yeah. and acknowledge that he's here and he's going to help us. Um, and I think sometimes that's as simple as it is, just setting that thermostat like a degree where it's like, it was just off by a degree and let's just change it. And sometimes it's subtle and simple, like Man, playing worship music. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I love that analogy because that actually makes it way less intimidating to think about. Because you're right, like that temperature, like the actual temperature in our homes only fluctuates by whatever, you know, like six degrees at the max, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't take much to notice a difference. What are, what are some of the ways, Heidi, that you in, in your home change, like adjust the temperature, spiritually speaking? How, like what are some, some of the like just practical things that you do that are maybe only one or two degrees, but you always notice a difference? Mm-hmm. Music is huge. Mm. I think that worship music and even just dance, praise music, when I'm feeling like, okay, everybody's in a funk, you know, my kids aren't getting along, or like, okay, time to dance it out, <laughs> yeah, or whatever. And, and the thing I think about music is it's such a simple one. It's so easy just to turn on some worship music. There the endless amounts of playlists and songs of dance worship songs, praise songs that um, can just get you focused on okay yeah this is truth and if this is the incredible thing about music is that it gets stuck in our heads mm. and even my two-year-old almost two-year-old she's not even and for the last four months like every now and then she just breaks out into um uh, something good <laughs> something good <laughs> that's the only two words she knows but I know what she's singing mm -hmm. and it's stuck in her head you know and it comes out while they're playing it comes out while they're um, doing whatever. And I, and I realized, okay, that was, I initiated the playlist. I get to choose that. They don't choose those songs and I could play any songs we want, but I choose those ones on purpose and because they help me, they lift mm -hmm. my spirit. Um, when I realized they get stuck in my kids' heads and that's the best because it's full of truth too. So it's like just the easiest way to get a download into your spirit. And then it shifts the atmosphere of your home too, that sense of um praise and worship to god so i think that's that is, a super easy one that is so cool yeah I, I love it like when i hear them playing and then they're singing worship songs i'm like i love it like they're four years old and she knows like they're not kids songs like you don't have to pick all kids albums because honestly <laughs> who wants to <laughs> listen to tiny tots praise all day no oh, but pass. we listen to like legit you know songs i like yeah. <laughs> and they they like it too so i think that's a super easy one i think another thing is to um uh we're not perfect at this but something i'm challenged in is you know building into the routine of your day things mm -hmm. so for example we pray before we eat dinner Many mm -hmm. people do that. Um, and, you know, my four-year-old, thank you, Jesus, for this yummy food. Help us have a nice day. Amen. And then moves yeah. on, right? Yeah. And it's the same prayer every night. And so sometimes we're like, you know, let's stop. Let's not pray the exact same words. Let's stop and think about what we're going to say tonight. Or let's pray for each other or whatever. And I think that that's a degree. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You can easily just be like, yeah, we prayed for dinner. Great. And move on. But you could just go, boop, shift that one and go like, we're going to be intentional for this moment right here. And yeah. Or like bedtime is so important. And I'm, you know, by bedtime, I'm so, so, so ready for bedtime. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, and, but that's one thing we were talking about in this parenting group. You were in it uh, uh, recently and it was a common theme, like slow down at bedtime. It's an important time to invest in your kids. And so we've been going through, there's so many devotionals out there you can find that are so quick and simple to read. They might walk through the Bible, they might do something, but you can pick any story you want for bedtime, but why not make it a devotional time where they're learning something about God's word? I, I think it's good, especially before bed, because we've had situations where we're dealing with fear, you know, yeah. night terrors, like it's crazy, the spiritual warfare that goes on when your kids are like three years old. And that's been like a real challenge for us to say, mm. man, we don't just want to say, oh, it's just a developmental thing. Like, sure. no, we, this is, this is something. And, and as the gatekeepers of this house, we need to go, 
no, in the name of Jesus, this is a place of peace. And we speak it over our kids and they speak it out. Like, okay, no, like last night, for whatever reason, bedtime is totally fine. And then one random night, literally last night, everybody's freaking out. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go. And she's so scared. And I'm like, okay, we're going to say this. I am not afraid. I'm not afraid. I will have a good sleep. I'll have a good sleep. God is always with me. <laughs> you know, like, and it's just on the spur of the moment, like, no, I'm not giving into this fear and you don't need to either. And I think that those are really special. It's frustrating because you're like, it's bedtime. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> but yeah. we have to slow down and just take advantage of those moments. So oh, those man, are some that's, of my practical things. Yeah, that's so good though. Especially, I love the bedtime thing because I think that actually speaks to what you mentioned earlier about how kids don't really have a filter. So if they're afraid, like they're afraid. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I've never had to put kids to bed, so I'm confident there's times where they're like, yeah, I'm afraid of my pillow, like, <laughs> yeah. and they're trying to stay up. But yep. you have that, parents have that sense of when they're being serious or not. And I wonder if that is, that, yeah, that kind of speaks to that unfiltered sort of way that they experience the world. Mm -hmm. And those, because the filter is um, not that thick of what's coming out of them, I wonder if it's easier actually for us to input as well. like the filter of keeping things out gets a lot thicker when you become a teenager or you become a young adult. And that is mm -hmm. such a unique time for us to pour into our kids the truth that yes, God is always with us. Like, I don't have to be afraid. That is yeah. so interesting. Well, and they say that so much of how you develop is before you're five, <sighs> which is crazy. And I think that we just cannot underestimate even the infants in the womb. You know, yes. and the, what they are feeling and experiencing, it's, it's all important for sure. And I think kids, like, I sometimes have to stop and go, was it a stressful day for you? Like, you know, I don't see that. I don't think of that always, you know, but sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, it was kind of a big day. You were out a lot, you know, it was busy or with other people. And maybe you were stressed and kids bring it home. They take it out at home and they dump on you. And so I think that's where it's like, it's extra challenging as a parent to go like why <laughs> I want to enjoy my kids but right. there are definitely times where it's like okay it's okay I'm I'm catch I'm catching the junk for you yeah. and I'm going to help you deal with it and so as parents we need to be careful about our own emotional health <laughs> and capacity to handle our not our own, not only our own stuff but theirs too so yeah. yeah what are what are some of the things that you do to help you stay present in those moments when it is a really unfiltered moment with your child and they're afraid or they're whatever and you're like yo you got to go to bed because i'm exhausted mm -hmm. how do you how do you stay present in that moment and not um like how do you you know steward that moment well no uh, you don't always <laughs> <laughs> oh man that is like the most human time I think when you're stressed and frustrated yourself and tired and whatever, uh, it's, that's when we're all the most vulnerable to yeah. let's, since we're talking about spiritual things, I really do think that's like, there, there it is. There's the open door for the enemy to come in and like make you lose your mind. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I do think it's important to recognize like parenting is the most selfless parenting and marriage are probably the most selfless relationships um, you can be in. And so you have to just go like, this is not about me right now. Mm. I'm going to be okay. I will get my sleep later. I can rest later. I need to just be here in this moment, literally laying down your life. Like, like, so, so sometimes I have to just go, I'll sleep later. It's fine. Mm. You know, I have to like set my brain for that. This is not about me. I'm, and lay down my expectations of it, right? So like last, you know, you think, okay, yeah, by 7.30, everyone's sleeping, it's great, then it's me time. Okay, now it's 8.30, and right. we're still up. And it's like, okay, I have to, just have to let go. That is not how this night is going to go. So that's fine. Lay down my expectations of how I thought it would be, embrace how it is, mm -hmm. and say, Holy Spirit, help me, because uh, <laughs> I don't want to do this right now, but I understand that this is my role and my responsibility, and you're going to help me through it so I I don't do that perfectly <laughs> at all but I think that that's um when I do do that I think it goes much better because I've I've let go of my own expectations of it and I just can actually see and focus and hear from God for what we need in the moment so. wow 
Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it isn't it interesting? Like it it feels like a very aggressive calling. Mm. <laughs> you know, like like I, I, these kids are mine to steward, and I actually have to lay down my expectations yeah. and my um, whatever plans that I had. But I feel like that's so it's challenging for me because I see Jesus in that. Like mm. yeah. I, I see it like that is how he carried himself and ultimately what what he did for us at the cross and um the new life that he offers us like that all stems from his ability to lay down himself or you know when it talks about Jesus emptying himself of his divinity and taking on the form of flesh like that's some serious lay down <laughs> yeah totally and that that is exactly what i heard echoing from you in talking about laying down your expectations and in in the moment to be able to love your kids well um that's amazing and you know what it is rewarding though i think um when i think about how there are times when you know so say for the dinner time thing there was one night everyone's whiny and cranky including us <laughs> and i was yeah. just like this is not fun and so i sometimes that just kind of carries on and it lingers for a while and everyone's just cranky and it's like, just go to bed and start again tomorrow. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. But on this particular night, I was like, okay, it's dinner time. Before we pray, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go around and we're going to say something we're thankful for. And of course my two-year-old doesn't really get it, but we, she just says what everyone else says and it's fine. Sure. But Everly, my four-year-old, she, she got it. Like she was like, okay. And so the first few times we, you know, the first time we did it and it was more sort of a necessity. Like I am breaking this right now. I need right. to shift the direction of this night because otherwise we're going down in a spiral. <laughs> right. It's not going to be pretty. Change and the temperature like, a couple degrees. Exactly. Or it's like a full on U-turn, like, we're not going this way enough. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. Turn <laughs> so, the AC on right now. Yeah. We got to get out. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so I said, let's go around and say something we're thankful for. So, and it forces my husband and I to do it too right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we're just like, I don't really care. I don't want to feel thankful right now. Yeah. You know, that's real. And yes, so then totally. <laughs> um, we go, we're doing, we're doing this. And it, it changes things so fast. But what I love is that in that moment, it was kind of a push past my selfishness moment. But then I was like, that's cool if that was a one-time thing. Like I, the next night, I didn't even really remember. But we go to sit down for dinner and Everly goes, okay, before we pray, let's everyone say what we're thankful for. Your four-year-old did that? Yeah. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay, this is a thing then. Cool. All right. And you know what? I just made me realize like the power of an one, one taking initiative that one time. And, you know, we haven't totally carried it every night since then, but every now and then she's like, let's say what we're thankful for. One of us will be like, I think we need to say what we're thankful for. And so it's just kind of become a point of reference, right? But it was cool because she picked it up and ran with it. And that challenged me the next night to go, oh, okay, that mattered what I did. That was practical and memorable and it made a difference. Um, and I was just doing it to get over myself. <laughs> um, but she got it. So that was kind of yeah, cool. That's really cool. And isn't it interesting how, going back to what we were talking about earlier, how parenting is often about what's going on inside of us. You made that temperature that degree change to say, all right, guys, I'm not feeling great. We need to talk about what we're thankful for. And that changed the atmosphere, but it then allowed your daughter to pick that up later and then change the atmosphere. Like she was then equipped to do that yeah. too. Totally. That's so, so cool. That's very cool. And that's also encouraging to know that like our kids listen when we, when we say things. <laughs> it was encouraging. I was like, oh, okay. I do have influence. Yeah. That's cool. That's I want to jump back to something that you mentioned earlier. Um, you were talking about before bedtime, you know, reading stories and devotionals and stuff. I am learning that it is difficult to communicate the deep truths of scripture without simplifying them to a point where they're no longer significant truths. I wonder if you could speak to how you balance that for your kids, because I sometimes have the tendency when I'm talking to young kids about the Bible to oversimplify. Um, 
and that's maybe not always the best approach, but this is something I've just been thinking about. How, how do you kind of tackle that, helping kids understand scripture? That's a good question. Um, I think it comes back to my realization that kids are so perceptive and they, they understand their humanity, I think. <laughs> understand is maybe a big word or not the right word, but they're pretty young, in touch with it. Yeah. Like from a young age, you start to notice or feel like you can tell when someone loves you. You can tell when someone is going out of their way to care for you. You can tell when you're feeling off, guilty. Maybe they don't use those words, but it's yeah. like, that didn't feel right to me. Um, and, and, and as you know, kids, like they're, they're egocentric, like they're totally thinking about themselves. They don't put themselves well, at my kid's age, right? Mm -hmm. My four year old's only just starting to understand emotionally other people feel things too. And other people, right. you know, yeah. that's, but otherwise they're totally thinking about for themselves. So, uh, but I do think that kids understand that. And so I've always been, I, I do try to be careful not to oversimplify, but at the same time, like with my kids right now, you have to keep it simple. Like, uh, as in not try to say too much. And I think you got to keep it part of your real life. Like, mm. um, okay. Yeah. You, you know what? We made a mistake there. What does it feel like to make a mistake? Yeah. It doesn't feel good. You know, that's an icky feeling. Like, so sure. We're not using the big words of scripture. Sure. Like it needs to be sanctified, justified. Right. We're not but, talking atonement theology with our four-year-olds. Yeah. No, but, um, or, sometimes I think you kind of have, to, you can have an approach of like, uh, there's two sort of schools of thought when it comes to educating, I think. And one is to like, these are the, this is the rubric and these are the things we do. And this is the things we talk about. And you could take that approach. Like I'm going to, you know, follow this curriculum as I teach my kids the word, mm -hmm. or there's the whole, like follow their lead. You know, what are they talking about? What do they want to learn about that kind of thing? And I think there's a good balance in between those where, um, you know, right now, we're dealing with a lot of back talk and sassiness, <laughs> which is kind of new to us. Like, okay, wow, here we go. So, and then it was actually cool because the whole Gateway Kids, um, your superpowers, your words yes. lesson came right at the right time. And we're like, perfect. Yes, let's talk about our words and how powerful they are and um, why they matter and stuff like that. So I think you kind of, it's a little bit of both. Like, you know, uh, I think you want to be intentional about getting on the front end. Like this is what God's word says. And, mm -hmm. and we do our devotions at night and things like that. But at the same time, it's like real life every day where we go, this is what we really need to talk about our words, you know? And <laughs> so following their lead and going with the flow. But I think one of the things we did this year, which is kind of a cool idea. It's not my idea. I saw it on Instagram. I can't give credit. I don't remember where, you know, one of those scrolling through like, that's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. Um, we started doing family, what I thought was just going to be called a family meeting. And this person was talking about how they do it, even when their kids are super little. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Okay, cool. Why not? Why not carve out time? And they just kind of grow up knowing like, that's our thing. We have that, which ours now evolved. And now everybody really calls it our family party, which is awesome. And so once so a month, cool. <laughs> once a month, we're like, it's family party time. But it started out in January where we, there's a couple things we do every time. We have a little dance party with praise music mm -hmm. and we take a picture like just a selfie of ourselves cool. as a family which is really cool and then um we do something fun so like there's a treat involved or like you know last month we did s'mores under a campfire or whatever but yeah. other than that we try really hard to make sure we pray for each other and then have something that we talk about but in the first one in january we decided let's pick a word um and so the word was communicate and we brainstormed all these ways that we communicate and we had to help her like we totally were coaching through it and my two-year-old doesn't get it at all. So it's fine. But, um, but we wrote it all out on this paper and then we put it up on the fridge and um, it's become a point of reference for communicating and how do we communicate well. But what we did is we picked one verse and it was kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, Proverbs 16, 24. Mm -hmm. And so since then, like that's been the verse we've memorized. So I'm not like super hardcore about memorizing all the scripture and all the things right at this point, sure. but there's one. We did. Yeah. We picked one. It went with our word. It's been a point of reference for six months now, five months now. And I think that was really, really good because we were starting to feel like 
exhausted by just being on our heels all the time with correction and discipline and just not getting ahead of like being intentional about talking about life and setting values for our family and stuff like that. So it just was a great light bulb moment. And so every month we've kind of re, you know, thought about what, what we're going to do. But anyway, that's just a cool idea that we had that has been really fun. I love that family. idea. So yeah. how do you, so do you sit down for like 10 minutes, half an hour? What does it look like? Yeah, we keep it to their attention span. Yeah. Um, like when we were doing the word at the beginning, like, you know, you start to feel like, okay, we're contributing the most as the parents and that's totally fine. Um, but we prompted her a few times. And so maybe that part took, you know, seven minutes, eight minutes, I don't know, something like that. And it's like, sure. okay, now it's dance party time. And then it just changes their, oh, okay, we can do that. That's fun. Or, okay, yeah. now it's time to have our treat or we're, take our picture first or whatever. So and it just morphs into it. And if it's getting long, we're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. You're not afraid to wrap it up. No, it's fine. And that's really cool grow with our family. So yeah. I love that. I love that you guys start that when your kids are little, because I have a distinct memory of my dad starting that with our family, but I was a teenager mm. and we were not stoked about it. <laughs> <laughs> it took, it took some time for us to understand the reason and for praying for each other and reading scripture together and having that we, it was exactly what we called it a family meeting. And I think we would do it every, every two weeks, maybe, or um, I, I can't remember now, but I love yeah. that you're starting it and introducing it into the rhythms of your family when your kids are young. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously they're, they're going to become teenagers one day, but it's incredible that you are starting it so young. One of the things that I, that comes to my mind right away is it's when I hear about practices like that, I, I always have a hard time starting them. Um, it feels like, oh, like it's too late for us to start a family meeting. Or it's like, you know, our kids are maybe people listening have teenagers. and They're like, my kids will never do that. Um, what would you say to encourage people that feel like they kind of missed their window? Hmm. No. Let, let it go. Let that go. I, I think at every age you are still, you're the parents. And I don't know. I, I don't have teenagers. So I, and I can, I, I can totally imagine that being such a hard thing. Like, Oh shoot. You know, I wish we had done that when I think what I love about this is that, you know, I think her, this person on Instagram was talking about doing it weekly and we're like, we're just not going to be able to do that. Yeah. We just realistically we're like, nah. And we don't, <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. fine. But we set it in the calendar monthly. So I think you have to d decide this is what might work for our family. And then gear it around what they like like right now our kids love to dance with music mm -hmm. but if your teenagers aren't into that like really then don't pick that be like we're gonna play video games and then we're gonna eat treats but in the middle we're gonna pray for each other mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like yeah. shift it around something that you love to do together um anyways that's why because <laughs> it was supposed to be called family meeting and everly after the first one was like it's our family meeting party and now it's a family <laughs> party and i'm like perfect that's way better to me so don't call it a meeting, <laughs> call it a family yeah. party and make it awesome. So I think one of the things I was so challenged in, in January was like, I'm a kid's pastor. I, I'm creative. And I put like almost no creative energy into my own family. Mm. Like it, it just convicted me. Like I spent so, like I love being creative for yeah. church stuff and kids and whatever. I love it. But uh, let's start with my house and my kids need to experience me being creative and thinking of them and loving them that way. So I think find out what, is, what do you do? What do you love? What do you, how do you um, contribute to your family and then get creative within that and share it with them? And maybe it starts with stories of like your life, go through a photo album. And, you know, my kids love looking at my old photos and I love showing them, you know, so Sometimes that's all, it can be something you'd like to do together. That's meaningful. Yeah, that's such a good encouragement. I think it's really easy for um, people who feel like with their work, they're really doing what God's called them to, to do and they're mm -hmm. using their gifts and they're using, you know, the things that they've studied and learned and acquired over their life experience. And sometimes I would forget that those things that God placed inside of me, those experiences that I've had can 
serve my family just as much or more than they can serve my my workplace or my employer or whatever. Yeah. Um, because God placed us in our families. <laughs> yeah. And he placed certain things inside of us for our families. And so anyways, I just thought that was a really cool, cool um, insight. Mm-hmm. All right, I wanna just ask one more question before we kind of wrap up. We have been talking a lot about younger kids, obviously because your kids are younger. And um, I love the fact that your kids, when you take the time to shift the spiritual atmosphere inside of you, they receive it and then also do things to change the atmosphere in a positive way, like what, what you were sharing about Everly and thankfulness. Or, you know, songs being stuck in their head. Um, There's a very spiritual aspect to that. And I wonder, do you think our kids, or or how do you think our kids experience the presence of God? Like, can they, what does that even look like for them? I mean, it's hard to know, but you're in in the middle of it right now. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that... um... I never want to put too much pressure on that whole idea. I think that, you know, well, actually one day, this is what struck me the one morning we were, you know, honestly, tuning into church at 9 a.m. has been a bit challenging for us uh, with little kids. It's just easier to watch the kids church one. Mm -hmm. Um, They're just not going to sit through the whole message and then we're not really hearing it and stuff. But there was one particular Sunday that we still tune in at least for worship and as long as we can get. And then, you know, at least Bryce and I can can watch later or we can, you know, that's kind of what I like about this season in a way. It's like the church box has been broken a bit and now it's like, okay, we're worshiping now. It's Wednesday at 11 a.m., but we're worshiping, you know what I mean? Or whatever, because it's like, that's what we need right now. But there was one Sunday morning where it's so easy and those like tuning in on a live stream, just to, like sit and watch um, right. when there's worship. But I was like, okay, we're all going to stand up. And we, we decided, you know, as a family, we're going to stand. And, and it started with something good, the worship set. Right. <laughs> and I was like, perfect. And I think it was like Waymaker after that, which my kids also love. And I was like, yes, this is like <laughs> perfect. You can't lose. Exactly. I was like, great. Um, so <laughs> that does help. <laughs> worship team that totally helps <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> awesome praise dance songs to start I know it's not everything but anyways so we stood and I recognize like here in our living room I'm going to raise my hands and I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to worship God and they're just going to see me do that and they're going to they you know we danced to the first couple of songs but then we worshiped to the third one like you know as mm-hmm. if we were at church and I think that that helped me realize that um when i i can i can connect with the presence of god anywhere i am if i want to right. and making that decision and just going like okay i'm gonna slow down and i'm gonna worship and they're gonna be here to experience it with me so i think that not putting too much pressure on them to experience the presence of god i don't really know how they do but i know that they can see and experience and feel like we like we do that yeah, there is more to life than just this and that God is real. And I I really do believe they would feel that, especially when we're just real about our faith. I think that's important. And then the other day, oh, here, I'll just close with this cool story. Yeah. Um, One night we were, so this whole quarantine thing happened right around Everly's birthday in March. And so we hadn't been to church and I have like a file there, um, staff, you know, a little file you can put mail in. And, um, (laughs) I hadn't checked it in a long time because we hadn't been at church. And so anyway, that's the backstory of how one night we were, it was bedtime and I can't remember how it started, but she was talking about wanting a princess doll, a new princess doll. And Bryce said, well, you know what? Like we can talk to God about that. And I remember thinking like, yeah, we can. Uh, Okay. Are you going to (laughs) like, okay, God, you know, this little girl is going to pray, you know? And he said, let's, let's pray. Let's just ask God, say, Hey God, I really like a princess doll. Um, and, and so thanks, you know, like what I was just so simple mm-hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, Oh my gosh, please God come through. <laughs> you know, we're, we're <laughs> this is stretching my faith right now <laughs> and I don't want her to be disappointed. 
you know, like, I, I yeah. don't want, I mean, don't let her down, God. It's like, hey, God, it's all on you. It's on you, man. Like, <laughs> I can, because honestly, I was like, we could manufacture something right now. And it, you know, make it seem like it was God. Right. Buy one. You're like, look, God provided. <laughs> don't do that. No, no do one. not do that. Let it really be God. Yeah. Anyway, so it was cool because, um, so we, she prays this prayer, right? Like, God, mm -hmm. I really want this. And so we had brought it up a couple of times. Like, she's, I really want this princess doll. Okay. Well, remember we prayed, we talked to God about it. And now we just trust him and see what happens. Anyway, so then uh, I went, I had to pick something up at church from my file. Or I checked my file and there's a birthday card for her in there, which we would have gotten before all this happened. But because of the timing of this quarantine, um, I got it later. Not thinking much of it. I get back in the van and they're waiting for me there. And I said, oh, Everly, I got this card in my file. Um, why don't you open it up? So she opens it up and we're just driving home. So like, I'm not even looking at her really thinking like, that's cute. There's a card there. Sure. She opens it up. She goes, mom, what's this? And she pulls out a $20 bill out of this card. And it was for a family friend, but it, the timing was just so perfect. And so she, I go, oh, I go, that's $20. That's a lot of money. And all of a sudden it hits me. And I go, you know what you can buy with $20? And Bryce and I look at each other. And I'm like tears in my eyes. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> She's like, what? I go, you could buy a princess doll with $20. Like that totally is God providing for you. And, you know, it was just such a cool moment. And so we go on Amazon later and find one. We ordered it and, you know, it came in the mail finally. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and then we rehearsed it. You know, we tell everybody, tell, tell them your story about your princess doll. And she's kind of hesitant. Like, they're not going to like it. They're not going to care. Like, honey, they're going to care. Grandma and grandpa want to hear about your story, you know, but it just builds their faith. I, I believe, I believe and trust it does anyways that, um, so how do they experience the presence of God? I'm not sure exactly. However, I think that we can and should encourage their faith and encourage them to pray. And that was like, that was a big moment for me. Um, yeah. We've been tracking this year since um, Bryce took a leap of faith and is on a new career path. And then now this has all happened and I'm on mat leave. So income has totally changed for us. And we just sort of at the beginning of the year, we're like, we got to trust God and say, God, you're going to provide. And definitely there's been moments that's been challenged, but it has been so cool. We've been tracking um, these coincidences. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's been really, really cool how God has been stretching our faith. And we've been sharing it with the girls. Like, look at this grocery card someone dropped off for us. We didn't ask for that, but God's looking after us. And it's so it's just, it's been really cool. You know, so many people have those stories, but this is our year for those stories, I think. And so, yeah. So just, Man, I think, let, just live it out with your kids. Just live it out. Let it be real. Let it come from your heart. Don't put so much pressure. I'm trying to be like, hey, not so much pressure on me, um, but let's turn to God and talk to him. And one degree at a time, we'll turn up the temperature. That's so good. Thank yeah. you for sharing that story, Heidi. I feel like when I'm a dad, I'm just going to be crying every day. Um, <laughs> getting a little misty. Um, I appreciate you sharing with us what you've learned and being real about what your household is like and what you guys are experiencing, because I think that gives a lot of people um, just like that sense of like, ah, okay, my house is similar. Yes. Um, you know, and it really, I, I just love that I, analogy of the thermostat. And it's like, man, just a couple degrees makes such a huge difference. And I think that is such an encouragement for parents today. So thank you so much for, for being on and for, for sharing. This was really awesome and super helpful. Awesome. I'm glad. Well, thanks for inviting me. It's been great. <laughs> You're welcome.